Good Friday morning right now. Dangerously cold temperatures are clinging to the state with areas seeing well below zero with the wind chill. You can see from that map there the temps oh. that we are dealing with in Minnesota. Minus 37 here in the Twin Cities. Yikes. And the mess at MSP Airport isn't dying down just yet. You can see a lot of people in line waiting. The hustle and bustle of the airport is on as they're trying to get away for the holiday weekend. And this is what it's looking like around your neighborhoods. We're Ooh. getting a lot of pictures and videos from your backyards. Of course, all snow covered, some with more than others, but they all have a good amount. Hopefully folks are able to hunker down on this Friday, the Christmas Eve Eve day. A lot of schools have been canceled. We do have them posted at carelevin.com slash cancellations, but a lot of people also are out because of the holiday, so they get to stay home. Yeah, that's a lucky. At least it's happening at this time of yeah. year. Let's check in with Guy to get the full details on all this. Yeah, weather warn day number three. This is our third weather warn day and our last for this week. We'll see some progress as you get into tomorrow. Blizzard warnings issue that will expire tomorrow at 6 a.m. You can see the counties highlighted in Orange, Hennepin, Ramsey not included in that uh, as you go into the counties here, North Metro into uh, Northeast and pink. That's a winter storm warning. You know, we already have the snow on the ground, so once the wind starts increasing mid to late morning, that will create whiteout conditions in portions. You can see there in that blizzard warning, especially south and west. Earlier this morning, I was finding visibility already less than a mile in uh, areas south and west, so that will be heading our way as winds increase. That'll get closer to the metro. I have some metro counties under that blizzard warning winter storm warning. This is widespread across the upper Midwest. So if you have any travel plans, just keep that in mind. Uh, give yourself some extra time as you probably know to do 12 below right now feels like 37 below on the skin. More frigid wind chills on the way tonight and tomorrow, but I'll let you know when we finally find some relief coming up. Looking forward to that guy. Thank you. Looking at the, the roads for you. Unfortunately, this is the second crash in the same spot this morning near the airport. Two cars now in the ditch at Highway 5 at Airport Road. A tow, another tow truck just got to the scene. As you can see, it is causing a little bit of a slowdown on the traffic cameras already blowing around this morning. Uh, some slowdowns into St. Paul and we're seeing some near Bloomington and downtown Minneapolis. I do want to show you MnDOT's 511 road conditions map. So anywhere where you see purple travels not advised that's southwest of us here in the Twin Cities and then red roads are closed in certain spots of the state right now in the southwestern part uh, down near Albert Lee. So just a heads up for that this morning. Also this morning, thousands of people across the country have been stranded just days before Christmas. Most of Minnesota is about to be under a blizzard warning as whipping winds blow all that fresh powdery snow. Eva is live at the airport as thousands try to get home for the holidays. Eva still looks relatively busy there. It is busy, Chris. All these people behind me, however, they knew it was coming. I mean, they didn't even have to be watching us, I'm sure, to know that the conditions outside are rough. It's easy to know that just driving in. I'm certainly not looking forward to the drive back. It was already bad coming in, and as the wind gets progressively worse, I, uh, driving is going to get worse. So if you are coming to the airport, you're going to want to give yourself ample time to get here. We do know that there are also a lot of cancellations happening. Thankfully, within the past hour, things have steadied, but we are sitting at 58 cancellations already this morning and about a dozen delays. And a lot of people who have been trying to get out, it just hasn't been working for them. If they didn't have a chance to reschedule their flight, we sat down with people who were pretty stranded. The plane that was supposed to take us out didn't have enough crew members on it, so they just canceled the flight. And then, of course, just like you know, we waited two hours to get told that there was nothing they could do in one lineup, took a tram over, waited another hour to that lineup, where they told us they really couldn't do much. That gentleman you just heard from actually got married just a few days ago. So talk about a high and then a come down because it is never fun having to face delay after delay after delay. But there is a way to avoid it if you want to look into getting a travel waiver. All major airlines are offering them and it might just help you avoid the big hassle here at the airport. Again, I do just want to say if you are coming here, take it slow out on the roads and give yourself plenty of time to come in here. Guys, I love the guy you talk to. He's in wedding bliss. He doesn't care about delays. That's right. right? Wedding bliss. Uh, weddings are always great at the beginning. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eva.
Well, Tell we, us more, Chris. We put together Tell a list of more. helpful information to track road conditions and flight delays. Text the word travel to 763-797-7215 and we'll send you a link right back. Remember to text that number. Don't call. This weather will spike our energy bills, but there are some things you can do to save some money. Yeah, the biggest thing, lowering your thermostat. XL re recommends setting it between 65 and 70 degrees when you're home. 65 is a little cold for me. Yeah, a little chilly. That's a little chilly. 58 degrees when you're not home. They also say take advantage of your blinds, opening them during the day and closing them at nights. And you may not think of this one. Lower your water heater temperature. XL Energy says right, the right temp for a heater is 120 degrees. Lowering it just by 10 degrees can save you up to 5%. If you're having trouble paying your energy bill, please reach out to us. We have programs in place. We have um, energy assistance options. And give us a call, and we're happy to work with you. If you'd like more tips on saving some energy, you can head to the store in our website, care11.com. I know it's my windows, the, the sills, they have frost on them. Frosted window panes in yeah. the Christmas song. It's not as <laughs> pretty <laughs> as it's not what you bargained for. I know even no. mine doesn't want to hit ice around the Ooh, It's there. that cold out. Yeah. Yikes. All right. Well, most of the country is experiencing these frigid temperatures during this storm. You might be tempted to warm up your car before you head out. I think we all do. Of course. Brandon Lewis, though, he looks into how efficient this is for your car engine. Nobody enjoys driving in a freezing cold car, so it's understandable that many drivers like to let their cars warm up for a few minutes before hitting the road. Others are concerned about damaging their cars by driving with a cold engine. Some vehicles even have remote start features that make this easier, but one verified viewer reached out to ask if warming their car could actually damage their engine. So let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Department of Energy, Firestone Complete Auto Care, Smart Motors Toyota in Madison, Wisconsin, and Napa Auto Parts. Gas-powered cars need oil to keep their engines lubricated. When you start a car, an oil pump circulates the oil in less than a minute. If you let your car idle to warm up the cabin, then the oil will slowly drain away from the key components since the engine isn't moving the car. Our sources say this leads to more friction, which causes wear and tear and could eventually shorten the life of your engine. Instead, our sources recommend driving about 30 seconds after starting your car because the engine will warm up faster when the car is being driven. In the past, cars needed to warm up for several minutes to avoid stalling because they used a carburetor. Nearly all cars built in the last 30 years now use electronics to ensure engines get the right combination of air and fuel to run no matter what the temperature is outside. So, yes, warming your car could damage the engine. There is one exception. If you drive an electric vehicle, you may want to warm up your car before unplugging it because heating the cabin uses battery power, which can shorten your range. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. All good stuff to know, but you'll still heat up your car. Yeah, yeah. especially with negative 37 degrees outside. Give yeah. it a few, give it a minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. And don't forget to download our weather app. We're plugging this a lot because it's we important have to. to have. It's important to have. So you can scan the QR code or you can find it where you find your apps by searching Care 11 WX. We're some good news and bad news this morning from the health departments. New numbers show RSV and flu hospitalizations and cases in Minnesota are trending downward. So that's the good news for you. 264 people hospitalized with the flu last week. That's compared to 400 the week prior. The health department says overall 2,600 flu patients have had to be admitted this year, but hospitals are bracing for an increase after we all get together for the holidays and the flu season is far from over. Despite the MDH curve looking like it took a small decrease in the last week or two, which we're always thankful for on those larger levels, uh, we are still in the pediatric community feeling, feeling the effects of that. And doctors are urging people to continue to take precautions like avoiding large gatherings if you're feeling under the weather.